Now, now, Alex, there, there, there are suggestions that, you know, eventually it will come down to Dr. Baumia and Alan Shermanting. And there's a potential, potentially, the suggestion is that the two may have to come together. Do you see this as a possibility? Um, no, I'm talking to Alex Segwefia here. Okay, all right. Uh, my position on this is very clear. You really don't care what they do. Mm. Absolutely don't care. The baggage that is being carried by whoever comes as a result of the performance of this government, anyone who comes is going to sink. Whatever permutation they put forward, whoever is the leader of the party, and it gets worse even when you mention the two forerunners, mm. because they have been part of government. One more so than even the other. So if you even put them together, you make matters worse. So as far as I'm concerned, the MPP is in a very bad place <laughs> in terms of trying to create a front which gives Ghanaians the hope that something is going to change in Ghana. They suggest to you that President Mahama is coming from the north. For the first time, if they are lucky, they have a candidate from the north. Even before he gets to this, he has broken your hold of the north. That they have come to lead you in the numbers in parliament in the north. So if they have that ticket, that's, 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 uh, it's done for John Mahama. That's the end of him. John Mahama had 4.5 or 4.5 million votes in 2016. We lost, MPP had 150 something six, we had 106 seats. The same John Mahama has moved to 6.5, 6, yeah, 6.5 million votes for the president, 6 million for us. So an increase of 1.5 million people in 2020 election. And we've moved from 106 to 137. Historically, the trajectory is going one way. So as for statistics and things, you look at them and you, you give your story. I'm sure others will say differently. The bottom line is that most elections have been impacted by the state of the economy of the country and how people feel about the current government after eight years. The MPP is looking very, very bad in that. In fact, no government that I can think of has come from such a low trajectory. All the macro economics against, against them. And yes, some will change by the time we get there. But people are not forgetful. Most decisions are made the year before the election. That is also historical. Mm. By, 20, by the time you are done your third year, most people know. So you, you then play they, with the swing They have voters. been telling Ghanaians, and they will continue to tell Ghanaians that and some Ghanaians know that it's not exactly their fault that the economy is where it no, is. No, it's exactly their fault. Let me just make this clear. Hmm. It's not that it's, it's exactly their fault. The level, the level of incompetence and lack of planning that has gone into Ghana in the last seven years has brought us where we are. Why? How many countries will ever reach 54% inflation? Hmm. How many? We've got there. Why? The borrowing. Why? COVID came and borrowed money for Ghana. They borrowed it. They're the government. Neither did the Russian Ukraine borrow money. It is our debt. Have we ever been under a domestic debt exchange like this, ever? So what has that got to do with all these things they are talking about? It is the debt position that has created it. And that is created by the MPP government. They borrowed. They were warned. So... I quickly want to put that aside. Let's not, mm. nobody should buy, buy into this propaganda about, mm. yes, the globally, there has, the COVID has had an impact. Yes, globally, the Russian Ukraine war has had an impact. But why isn't every country in the same position that we are in? Mm. To the level of the macroeconomic indicators. Even going to the IMF is, of itself is not necessarily something that you can say, oh, because, but the extent to which we have had to, the conditions, why? People I, cannot, I, bonds are, are at risk. I, I never would have thought that you could talk about Ghana in terms of, um, you know, our CD and its development. And the comparison is that we are 
we are only better than is it uh, Zimbabwe and one other country, you know, in that regard. But you know that elections are not exactly on these numbers. No, we our biggest problem since in the last election, 2020, is we never believed and we still do not believe that we had a free and fair election. In fact, if you have a referee that can explain their decisions, then you have a problem. So regardless of what anybody says in the courtroom, we have a, a right to information bill and all that. So at least tell us how you came about things. So we are clear in our mind that our biggest problem is to ensure that we count and count our numbers properly. We've raised our hands on that. Interesting. Just going back mm. to the point, mm. I've heard my colleague about Chachi Kwesen. We have learned our lessons. We know. He, he made a comment about, uh, yes, even this year, we have made it clear because of the timing of our elections for the parliamentary. People are allowed to contest even if they have dual citizenship. But by March 2024, if you haven't brought your certificate, the seat becomes vacant and we have a quick. Okay. So we are alive. This issue of why should charge education come 2012, you don't, need no, you don't know our rules at the time. Well, and you shouldn't speak for us. Well, maybe, and we, maybe by that time, yeah. Parliament would have passed the amendment to the Constitution to remove the impediment on dual citizens. You know there's a bill in I'm, I'm hoping okay. that would come to pass, All right. which, pro by the way, John Mahana has promised to push. Okay. Um, Richard, Richard uh, thank you once again. So